Hey folks, what's up? It's Ryan here. So today, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of coffee. We've got the good boy Bob coffee roasters from Los Angeles. So you can see that on Joe's vlog. This was probably one of our favorite coffee roasters while we were down there. Um, cute little shop. This one's got mango, papaya, and vanilla sugar tasting notes. Yeah, like super sweet, like a little bit of like brightness, but not lemon. It's not tart. Yeah, so if you're in the LA neighborhood, go check out Good Boy Bob. And about a month ago, I posted a video, A Day in the Life of a Lion Cook in Vancouver. And in the comments, a few of you guys noticed that I'm not at the same job when I posted my previous one, Day in the Life of a Sous Chef in West Vancouver. And I thought I'd explain why I was taking a step back from a management role as sous chef, being the second in command in the kitchen, to coming back down to a line cook and really just focusing my time more on growing my cooking knowledge instead of being a manager or making a lot of money. So my previous position was at a corporate style restaurant in West Vancouver. It had a really nice kitchen. I'm sure you can see that it was very beautiful and I got paid really well while I was there. I started off as a line cook and I worked my way up to sous chef. I had been with the company for just over a year and then the pandemic hit. And as everything was shut down for a little while, they were looking to reopen. And I found myself being promoted to sous chef. There was no other sous chef at that time and it was you know, just a lot of responsibility on reopening the kitchen because it was my first time like handling a management role and I just felt really unprepared, but also like it wasn't really an opportunity I could pass up. My 160 per day jumped to $55,000 a year plus tips. And I found that I made a lot of mistakes that year. Maybe it was just due to my age or inexperience or just, you know, people make mistakes and that's normal. And it was a really tough year for me because I really didn't find motivation in my job while I was getting a lot of money in and I was happy with my pay and I felt like I was, you know, valued to an extent. I just didn't really have enough motivation to continue cooking there. And the things I found myself learning at that job was more management style. But I also had somewhat of a chip on my shoulder of proving to myself that I could, you know, at least last a year, help reopen the restaurant, get the staff trained and everybody knows what they're doing and then I can move on and, you know, leave the restaurant. I think working for a corporate style restaurant, I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to play with the menu as much. I wasn't going to be able to have as much input on features or even run features at all. I think during my two years that I spent at that job, I had one feature and I didn't really receive enough guidance on it to be satisfied with it at the end of the day. And that really pushed me away from not running features after that. And while I was working there, I was doing about five days a week, nine to 11 hour days. And it just felt like we were understaffed the entire time. The amount of stress being a manager in that position while you're not in control of hiring was just incredibly frustrating. I could just see all the staff and myself were just burning out. And I found that none of us really enjoyed what we were doing at work. We we're just working because we were making good money. And that, to me kind of pulls the passion out of the career. And if you're invested into being a chef and if you're invested into learning and loving food, you wanna be surrounded with people who love to learn about food. And I just found that the corporate side of things was just very money motivated. And as a young chef and as a young you know, cook, I wanted to learn more about food. And I found that my knowledge about food wasn't at the level I was satisfied with to become a sous chef. And I think that added to some insecurities within myself about my role. So after a year, I decided it was time to move on and I just really wanted to learn more about food. I think that was the biggest thing that was next on my radar. So I started looking for a job after about a year and my biggest priority was finding somewhere where I could learn as much as possible. I had made enough money for a while. I wasn't really concerned about a paycheck because I just really needed to grow my knowledge. And if I didn't feed that desire, I just knew that I would burn out completely and never cook again. And when I started at my current job, I realized how much freedom there was and how much availability for new products were coming in. They were ordering from farms instead of big providers like Cisco and GFS. And everything kind of rotated the menu based on seasonality. And I think that's a great source for inspiration is using what you have available that's local to you. So finding a restaurant that was going to do that was really key. But also what I liked is that the chef allowed for creative freedom from anybody on the team. It didn't matter if you were right out of the gate starting with the restaurant or if you had worked there for three years, everybody had equal input into saying their mind and being able to contribute to the menu or a feature or you know, in any capacity. This is very different than the traditional hierarchy of a restaurant 
generally in a restaurant you have one person at the top dictating everything and then everybody falling in line under that very militaristic in a sense but coming into a kitchen that has somewhat of a democracy with somebody at the top leading the team i think that that was a very good eye opener on how to grow because i'm able to create in a guided environment. But the biggest downside of this was I was gonna have to take a big pay cut. I was gonna go back down to my $160 a day and it's only four days a week. So it's even less than what I was making before. But that one extra day off means that I've got more time to invest in my hobbies. And if you're looking to invest in hobbies of your own, now's a great time to shout out Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators. Whether you wanna make music, Italian food, apps, web design, or take pictures, whatever you're interested, they probably have a class for it. To freshen up on sourdough, I've been taking the class, Create the Most Powerful Sourdough Starter, Intro to Bread Baking and Pastries by Marco Doboin. He teaches you how to care for your sourdough starter and really what to look out for when you're making bread or croissants or bagels or whatever you can think of. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, so that means there's no ads, they're always launching new classes, and it's 100% self-motivated so you can go at your own pace. And since we all love a good deal, the first 1,000 of you guys to click the link in my description are gonna get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So whatever topic you wanna start investing in, you are able to get creative with it today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. One of the biggest changes from my previous to current job is knowing the owners and working alongside them. At the previous job, the owner would come in every couple months and he'd maybe order one or two things and then critique it and then give back some feedback to the kitchen. But at my new job, I actually get to work alongside with the owners one of the owners is a front of house manager, so he works on some shifts. And the other owner is working at the bar next door. So I'm able to interact with them and ask them their opinions and just get to know them on a personal level. That means they're a little bit more understanding with the way that service goes and there's less hoops you have to jump through and need to add something to the menu or change something for service or really whatever. And I find that they're just a bit more understanding in terms of expectations in general. Mind you, working in a smaller kitchen does have its ups and downs. The previous kitchen I'm sure you saw was quite beautiful. It was big, lots of space, but now we're a bit more limited with what we have available. But that doesn't stop us from having a great budget for staff meal. This is probably one of my favorite things about my new job. And my previous job, it was pretty much whatever trims were available, or you know, sometimes it was vegetarian because there was no meat and it kind of just felt like we weren't very valued with what we were eating. So coming into a place where they're like, yeah, let's order in some chicken, which in its root form is very basic. It just makes you feel a little bit more valued and you're able to be a little bit more creative with what you're eating and just feel, you know, nourished. And we're actually encouraged to be a little bit more creative with our staff meals as well. So anything you wanna learn or practice with, you're able to really push your own like sense of knowledge. Recently, I made porchetta for staff meal, which was quite ambitious. I've made Korean fried chicken for staff meal. I've made Cubano sandwiches. We've done a ton of different things. Just, you know, learning how to be creative, learning old recipes or different techniques. We also serve a lot less people in a night Having a smaller kitchen means having a smaller staff and a smaller dining room. Another big change is not having service throughout the entire day. Um, at my previous job, we had lunch, happy hour, and dinner. So as soon as you got in, you're pretty much go, go, go right until the time you close. And I found that that burns you out a lot faster than having a couple hours to just focus on prep. But ultimately, the biggest reason for changing job was just I needed to learn more and I wasn't satisfied at my previous job with the amount that I was learning. Currently, I'm learning how to write a menu, create a dish from scratch, but I think most importantly for myself, I'm learning what food inspires me because you can't just come in and be like, all right, I love Italian food without ever having eaten it or being exposed to it. So a lot of time that I spent exposing myself to as many things as possible, I'm able to figure out what's important to me and create food based on that. I guess I was just ready for creative inspiration and the freedom to act on it. And to a new cook, I think it's really important to learn structure. And by the time I was sous chef, I think I had learned how to get there. And that just leaves me learning how to create food for myself and what I'm interested in. And getting a chance to say something with a dish was the next thing I felt like I really had to learn. Anyways, guys, that's my view on my position change and why I did it. Hope that makes sense to you guys. And we'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.